Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Arslan from Peace Church. Blossom and I are here today and he is a very excited helper because we're doing lesson number seven in God Leads His People. And our lesson number seven is about food. So that's one of the reasons Blossom has been so helpful because he loves his food, kitty chow, but he also likes to investigate anything that I'm eating or that I might be fixing for my family. So we'll see how helpful he is because we're going to start our lesson off today with a game. And the game is called, What Is It? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give a description of a food. I'm going to give you some clues about seven different foods. And then I'm going to hold up an example of the food and see if you can guess what it is. I know that all of you out there are going to guess these, but we're going to start off with the first one, Blossom. Oh my, who knows what he's going to do in this lesson today. Anyway, here is the first clue that we have, and this food, boys and girls, is a small dried fruit. It is usually kind of brown in color, and it's kind of wrinkly. It's one of my favorite snacks. I also love to eat it in cookies and desserts. But anyway, this is what it looks like. Do you see? I have several of them in this little bowl. Mm, that's pretty yummy. What do you think it is? That's right. Those boys and girls are raisins. Good job. Let's look at our food number two. Here's your clue. This is a yummy vegetable. When it is harvested, it's usually long and orange, and it may have green stems or tops on it. You may not have seen it like that in the grocery store, but they do sell it like that. And sometimes the snack that you guys might eat at home are little ones that have been whittled down off the big ones this is what one looks like from my fridge. That's right. It's a carrot. Sometimes you probably see them like this, little baby carrots that you might dip in ranch dressing or eat um, in your little snack box. They're yummy, aren't they? Those are carrots. Yum. Okay. Our third food, let's see if you can guess this one. This one is another veggie. You can eat it raw and uncooked. Sometimes you can put special toppings on it. It's long and it's green and it has kind of a little um, indentation in it, a little ditch in it that you can put fun things in to eat like peanut butter or pimento cheese, or you can just eat it as it is. You can also chop it up. I like to do this and put it in um, soups and stews and salads. Let's see if you can guess what that might be. Here's a stalk from my refrigerator. That's right. It is celery. Celery. Let's see what our next food clue is. This fruit is one of my all-time favorites. It's round. It can be red or green or yellow or some combination of those. It's usually crunchy and delicious. You can eat it raw. You can eat it cooked. Um, here is one from downstairs. This one happens to be my favorite. The variety is called Honey Crisp. But what is this? You guessed it. You guys know. You know your foods. It's an apple, isn't it? Okay, what's our next food clue? It's another fruit. It's round. It has an orange color. Uh, it could be reddish or orange. It has a skin that you peel. You don't eat the peel. You eat the inside. Um, a juice is made from it, but I love to eat them. Just cut them into quarters and eat them. That's right. It's an orange. and orange, that fruit that has the same name as its color. That's exactly right. What's our next to the last food clue? 
Well, this fruit is long. It is usually yellow, although it starts out as green and then it turns more yellow. When it gets really, really, really ripe, it turns kind of a dark brown and is really super, super sweet. That's right, it's a banana. It's a banana. One, another one of my favorite snacks, especially with peanut butter. Okay, our last food question for the day, our last clue. These are thin and crispy baked kinds of snacks. Something like bread, but very yummy with cheese or a spread. I've got some right here. I think these are wheat thins. That's right, they're crackers, aren't they? Crackers. Well, you guys did great. I bet you've probably had all of those things at some point as a snack. Yay to your moms for fixing healthy snacks. And today in our story, we're going to be talking about food because what's happened, if you'll remember, is that God has freed the Israelites from slavery in Egypt. He took them away from Pharaoh. He walked them on dry ground through the Red Sea, and now they are walking on their way to the promised land with herds and silver and gold that they got from the Egyptians and provisions for a long, long walk. And the story today includes a food called manna. Now, I'll be honest with you, I've never eaten manna, but the Bible tells us that it's a little wafery-like thing that tastes maybe like honey. It's white. The word manna itself means, what is it? That's what the word means in their language. So I want you to get ready with me to learn about manna today. We're going to be reading from our Bibles. Our story today comes from Exodus, the second book in the Old Testament, Exodus chapter 16. It's in our Bible, so we know that every single word of it is true. And I think it would be a great idea if you sat down with mom and dad later today and read this whole chapter together to hear about how God provided bread from heaven. But I'm going to tell you the story right now and give you the highlights. The Israelites were traveling in the desert. They were walking, remember, from Egypt to the promised land, the land that God had promised to give them. They'd been traveling for many weeks. And even though they had brought a lot of food and provisions with them, their food had finally run out. And they started to get hungry. And they started to complain when they got hungry. In fact, I'm betting some of them were hangry. Do you know what that means? That means when you get so hungry that you start to get angry. And they were angry with Moses, and they were angry with God, and they said, we don't have anything to eat, Moses. They were grumbling, they were complaining, their stomachs were probably grumbling too. And they said, why did you bring us out here to this hot, dry desert? We're going to starve to death. We should have stayed in Egypt. At least in Egypt, we had enough food to eat. Well, Moses listened to the people complain. He knew they were complaining because they had stopped trusting God to take care of them. Now, God had led them away from Pharaoh after all those plagues. He'd gotten them through the Red Sea safely without being overtaken by Pharaoh and his chariots. But they seem to have forgotten all those things. And all they know is that right now, their tummies are grumbling and they are very hungry. Well, the Bible tells us that God also heard the people complaining. And God said this to Moses. This is straight from Exodus chapter 16, verses 11 and 12. God said, Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them this. At twilight, that means just after the sun has set at night. At twilight, you will eat meat. And in the morning, you will be filled with bread then you will know that I am the Lord your God. And do you know what happened, boys and girls? That evening, our wonderful, powerful God gave the Israelites meat to eat, just like he said. He sent a flock of quail, which are birds, and these birds flew right down to the Israelite camp, and the people were able to grab them and cook them for supper. 
And the Bible tells us that the Israelites enjoyed eating the food that God sent them. Everybody had plenty to eat. And I'm sure they are starting to recognize that God had kept his promise to provide for them. The next morning, they woke up. And when they looked out on the ground for as far as they could see, they saw these thin white flakes laying on the ground. And they asked the question, manna, which means, what is it? And Moses looked at them and said, this is the bread that God promised you he would give you to eat. And he told them, I want you to only gather enough manna, all you need to eat for one day and God will send more tomorrow. This may have been what it looked like. Do you see in this picture? Their tents are are, uh, pitched out on their way to the promised land, and they're gathering into their baskets these white, wafery, thin things that are the bread, the manna that God has sent them. You see, God wanted his people to trust him day by day, to trust that he'd provide for them. And so that's why Moses told them, only get what you need for today. But some people disobeyed. They didn't listen to what Moses had to say. And they took more than what they needed and they set it aside because they're like, "What? I'm, I might need this tomorrow. What if I get hungry tomorrow? And you know what the Bible tells us? that those that gathered more than they needed for one day, when they woke up the next morning and looked at what they gathered, it was rotten and full of worms. Well, every single day, God gave them all the food that they needed for that day. And on the day before their Sabbath, the day that they met together to worship, like our Sunday, Moses gave the people another message from God. Moses told the people, today, on this day before the Sabbath, You are going to get enough manna for two days. God's going to send plenty of manna. Gather what you need for two days. And um, God is going to keep that manna fresh so that tomorrow on the Sabbath, he's going to give you a chance to rest and to worship him. You won't need to gather manna on that day. The manna that you gathered the day before will stay fresh. And that's exactly what happened. But again, boys and girls, some people disobeyed and they didn't follow God's instructions. And this time they didn't gather enough bread. And when they went out on the Sabbath to gather it, there was no bread anywhere. There wasn't a single flake of manna to be found. Once again, God had told them, you need to do what I say and you can trust me when I tell you I'm going to give you enough the day before for two days before the Sabbath. God knew what was best for the Israelites. He knew when they needed food. He knew that they needed to rest and worship him one day every week. He wanted his people to trust him day by day to provide for all their needs. And you know, God knows exactly what we need as well, doesn't he? He knows that we need food to make our bodies strong. He knows that we need to stop at least one day a week and come together to worship him and and to rest from our weekly labors. And let's just uh, review right now this verse that we learned last week for the first time, Exodus 14, 13b. That's a great reminder to, to us that God is going to do the same thing for us that he did for the Israelites. To not be afraid to stand firm, that he will give us what we need and deliver us. Um, If you'll remember, that verse was Exodus 14, 13b. Here's a poster with the words on it. It says, do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. Let's put those motions that we learned last week with it. Are you ready? Do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. Exodus 14, 13 B. Let's do it together one more time. Are you ready? How does it start? To not be afraid, right? Are you ready? Do not be afraid. 
Stand firm and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. Exodus 14, 13, B. Great job, boys and girls. Keep learning God's word. Keep hiding it in your heart, and he will bring it to your mind at just the moment you need it. Not just now, but all through your life. Let's go to God right now in prayer and thank him for providing for us. You know, he is always waiting to hear from us. So if you would join me, bow your heads and close your eyes. Let's pray and thank him right now. Dear God, we thank you so much for this great story and this great reminder about how you cared for every need that the Israelites had. And we thank you that you care for every need that we have. Thank you for giving us food. Thank you for giving us clothes and shelter and a family. Thank you for sending Jesus, your son, to die on the cross for our sins. We thank you so much for that. We know that we can't do any of this ourselves. We can't save ourselves. And we pray that you'll give us faith to trust in you for all that we need. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, boys and girls, since we were talking about food this week, it would be a great idea this week to share some of the food that you and your family have with somebody who doesn't have enough. Maybe a meal for a neighbor or a friend that's sick or in need of um, some special assistance. Or maybe it's taking some extra cans from your pantry and delivering them down to the Dorcas Food Ministries pantry where they can give them out to folks who are looking for a nice meal for their family this Thanksgiving. Those are all great ideas about how you can be the light. I'll see you next time. Bye now.